you're listening to Morse Code broadcast by W1AW, the radio station of the American Radio Relay League. And I want to tell you a bit about my journey into ham radio to start this series of brief lectures. This is a copy of my ham radio mentor, Ron Allen G2DSP. The G prefix means a United Kingdom call sign, specifically an English call sign. And Ron was a great pioneer in UHF and VHF radio, as well as a lot of other things. I started out with uh, an interest in uh, electronics, building crystal sets when I was uh, about 10 or 11. And uh, in my teen years, I graduated to uh, building pirate radio transmitters. And you can see one such in the lower left corner of this uh, image here using a venerable 807 vacuum tube. And uh, eventually, uh, so after spending a while emulating the then uh, radio stations like Radio Caroline and playing Beatles music over this, which I guess was audible for about a mile from my house, I uh, became legitimate, um, took the appropriate test for the equivalent of the technician license. And way back in 1965 was licensed as G8AWJ. And my first year at university, I learnt Morse, Morse code and got the call sign G3 in the UK, ZCE. So uh, those were the early days. I gave up on ham radio for many years on coming to the States, but relicensed again, getting an extra class license in the year 2000 as AC7FL. Well, having gotten rid of all my ham radio gear, uh, I didn't want to spend any money on the hobby. And so I built myself a little mint tin transceiver using scrap components. As you might imagine, these things run off a small battery and produce almost no power at all. But it just so happened that I was doing this around the time that the solar cycle had peaked and propagation on the uh, 30 megahertz was really wonderful at times. And one of the first Morse code calls I put out from this little Altoids uh, tin transceiver uh, using a Morse code key had a station come back to me, me with what I thought was a French call sign. But actually, it was a station in New Caledonia in the middle of the Pacific. And this contact was made with about two watts of power and a small wire under the eaves of the roof of my house. Going on to, to nowadays, uh, I recently became fascinated with moon bounce owing to the wonderful technology developed by Joe Taylor, K1JT. And so this uh, picture here, which is my QSL card, and I'll explain Q codes in a little minute, but this is the card used to confirm contacts shows a picture of my moon bounce um, array up in the background here, pointing over this um, little swimming pool uh, equipment wall. In the background, you can see another vertical antenna for lower frequency bands. So <clears throat> ham radio <coughs> has another number of idiosyncratic phrases uh, that uh, can easily put uh, a newcomer off. And they have a long history, though. Down in the bottom right hand uh, of this slide, you see an early spark transmitters. These worked by generating uh, a very high voltage uh, spark across a gap. And then the uh, generated very broad band uh, radio signal was filled a little bit by capacitors and inductors and coupled into a long wire antenna. And that was how the first Marconi transmitters worked. Well, of course, all they could do was to send Morse code. And so hence the dominance of Morse code in early radio. In order to make communications succinct, a code was developed for a number of the common exchanges. So if you want to call, put out a call to any station to answer you, the call is CQ. So if you're on phone, you'll say CQ, CQ, CQ. This is AC7FL calling CQ. And if you're on the key, you'll say da 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 da
Uh, another thing that puzzles many newcomers is the prevalence of the phrase 73s. This was used as a sign off and a friendly gesture at the end of Morse code communications because it sounds nice. Da 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 da. And so you'll hear 73s uh, used verbally in uh, <clears throat> people ending conversations, just like you might say bye and have a good day in, in uh, English. The <clears throat> Q code for what is your location, my location is, was QTH. So you'll hear people referring verbally to my QTH as my location. A contact was a QSO. You confirm something, in particular a contact, by QSLing. In other words, you sent the letters QSL in Morse code. But as you saw, we have things now called QSL cards that are exchanged to confirm a contact. A couple of other examples are the request uh, that the sending station increase its power, QRO, or decrease it, QRP. So my little uh, transceiver in a mint tin uh, was a QRP transceiver, sending out less than five watts. You can find a complete list of the <coughs> Q code um, on the AWR well side, uh, AWRL side in uh, the little PDF file called Communicating with Other Hams. So some of the useful Q codes are QSY, please QSY, meaning please change your frequency. I'm going QRT, meaning I'm going to um, stop transmitting and going to bed generally. And then in, in the same PDF file, you'll see the phonetic alphabet, which is very useful when communicating uh, by voice. So for example, if asked what my call sign was, I might say it's Alpha Charlie 7, Foxtrot Lima. And so you'll find all of the, uh, this information on the ARRL website. Now, as I've already uh, alluded to, there are many different types of uh, radio communication signal. Morse code called CW for just carrier wave or continuous wave consists of sending a burst of constant amplitude signal followed by no signal. And so the receiver detects either a carrier there or no carrier. And an audio tone is generated by having a slightly different frequency generated inside the receiver. So that the difference produces the audio tone you hear at the speaker. And as you heard in that uh, train of signals at the beginning uh, of this lecture. Amplitude modulation takes this carrier, so this waveform that has a constant amplitude at some frequency, and changes the amplitude with time, impressing the voice signal on it. Now, you can see that the effect, of course, is to change both the up and the down amplitude, so the voice energy is not used most efficiently. In fact, it turns out that if you modulate a carrier with a pure tone, and you fully modulate the carrier, in other words, at the uh, highest amplitude, you just turn the carrier off, um, then the about a third of the power is radiated in pure carrier, uh, a third of it in uh, frequency shifted upwards by the signal frequency, and a third of it by a signal shifted downwards by the signal frequency. Another approach is to leave the carrier amplitude constant but to change the frequency with modulation. This is FM radio, and it has an enormous advantage over AM radio. In AM radio, anything that changes the amplitude of the received signal can distort the uh, signal itself, the audio. In FM, the amplitude can change over quite a wide range, and unless the receiver actually loses its lock on the phase of the incoming carrier, nothing will happen. So FM radio is much less subject to distortion. It's also very important in modern digital modes of transmission because by shifting the frequency by certain fixed amounts as defined for various digital modes, one can encode uh, numbers or characters in the signal that is sent. And so two examples that I'm going to mention later 
our JT65, which is the very weak signal uh, scheme that is used for, for example, Earth Moon Earth communication, and FSK41, uh, which is used for very rapid uh, communication when signals are transiently present, um, as for example, in scattering of meteorites. So what happens in a typical, typical exchange? So here is sort of a transliteration of um, a Morse code exchange and a verbal exchange wouldn't be too different. So I'm calling CQ, CQ, and then the convention is from is just DE, uh, AC7FL, repeat my call, and then K, da, 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 means finish, please transmit. And then in this case, I'm fantasizing my little Altoids uh, CAN transceiver uh, is picking up a signal from New Zealand. And so um, ZL9AB is calling me, AC7FL, DEZL9AB. And then I call him back, ZL9AB, the AC7FL. So he knows I got his call sign. And then typically abbreviated English, thanks for your call, TNX, uh, your call, uh, your, your RST, which stands for Readability Strength and Tone, uh, 559, which means the um, readability on a scale of one to five, the strength of the signal on a scale up to nine usually. And then the tone, this goes back to the days of Morse code, because old transmitters could be quite wobbly and you'd want to let the sender know if their frequency was wiggling around. Generally these days um, with uh, phone communication, it's, um, it's simply five nine. And uh, with digital modes, uh, one sometimes just reports a signal level in, in decibels or just signal received, which is zero, zero, zero um, encoded for some digital modes. So anyway, your RST549 uh, comes back from ZL9AB in QTH uh, Auckland and the name Frank, and I've given him my name above that, my QTH. And then where this is a quick QSO, we're signing off. So um, I call him back again and say many thanks FB abbreviation for fine business, which was an old verbal expression for a good contact, uh, FBQSO, Frank. QSL via the Bureau, meaning send your QSL card via the ARRL Bureau. And then here's that da 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 73s and ES for and GL, good luck. And then when signing off, it becomes a little bit more complicated. You notice above that, um, ZL9AB uh, signed their terminal transmission with ARK. Da 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 da. K was the transmission to uh, the invitation for me to transmit. And then down below here, I sign off with AR, da 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 da. And then SK, da 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 da, which means the end of the contact. And so he also sends many thanks for the Cure Stuart. 73s and da 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 da. So, someone hearing the da 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 from him would know they could then call him because he's finished with me. The verbal QSO might have gone this is AC7FL calling CQ, 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 whatever band from AC7FL, AC7FL standing by. And then, if I'm incredibly lucky, uh, ZL9AB calling. Uh, Zulu Lima 9 Alpha Bravo, and I would then come back, Zulu uh, Lima 9 Alpha Bravo, this is Alpha Charlie 7 Foxtrot Lima, thanks very much for calling me, your uh, signal report is 559, handle here is Stuart QTH Phoenix, um, so back to you, and then so on uh, in uh, normal English communication, except for all these strange Q code things. There are lots of things that hams um, get up to. Um, perhaps the most common is experimenting, almost common is experimenting with antennas. I don't know anybody who uh, can put up a standard antenna easily um, without playing in some way or the other to make it fit their apartment, their house, the patch of land they're on. So very common to uh, experiment with custom antennas. Uh, many of us build our own equipment, homebrew uh, rig, 
And uh, in particular, what I've done recently, because I've been teaching a class on using Python and the Arduino to carry out electronic experiments, is I ran my moon bounce a station under the remote control of uh, an Arduino microprocessor uh, that in, control, in turn is controlled over the internet by a computer. That's enormous fun for anybody who enjoys uh, building things. Um, contests uh, for the competitive amongst you, uh, these are typically held over a weekend and the idea is to get as many contacts of a particular kind as, as possible. Uh, a variation on this is field day, it's a contest, but the idea is to take portable gear out into the woods and uh, it's a fun excursion as well as a practice for operating without uh, mains power for emergencies. Fox hunts where one uses direction finding to find hidden transmitters. I alluded to field day as being practice for emergencies. So hams uh, very typically provide uh, communication support during emergencies when there are power outages and so on, um, and support for events like uh, races and so on. Um, Hunting DX, as it is, is called, this once again a Morse code abbreviation, meaning long distance uh, communication. And uh, so looking for rare um, countries or locations, or if you're on VHF, um, parts of the states you haven't worked before. And then you can get an awards like uh, Worked All States or DXCC, which is the DX Century Club for working 100 countries and having them confirmed with QSL cards. And then finally, uh, if you've got the time and the temperament for it, um, just hanging around and chewing the rag with um, other radio hams. So that's the introduction. Next, let's talk about some basic electronic principles.